Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And what a garden season. We didn't see this last year. It's really coming on long, strong. The uh, tomatoes, oh my gosh. Have they, like, grown, I don't know, three feet this week? It's really looking good. And then uh, my potato vine. This is a real pretty ornamental vine. It, it's related to sweet potatoes, but they've, you're, it does actually grow a sweet, sweet potato, but it's, it's uh, not harvestable. It's edible, but kind of starchy. It doesn't taste that good. Uh, not like a real sweet, sweet potato. But the foliage is unbelievable. Chartreuse, uh, uh, purples, uh, greens, variegated greens and blues. They're just stunning. And during the monsoons, they've quadrupled. In size, they went from cute, oh, look at my sweet potato vine, to it's now wrapping around the patio. I mean, it just, it's going everywhere. But it loves this kind of weather. And, and the, re, the way you use those, the reason they're so hardy in the summer months is because they store all their moisture in that root, which makes them super tough. And then they trail. They look really good at the front edge of raised beds or in containers flowing over. So we planted some of these in the downtown planters around downtown Prescott, uh, the heart of the, where the courthouse is. You folks that live here, you know what I'm talking about. If you, you visited, uh, we're famous for a courthouse. Well, the, the hanging baskets around the, the courthouse, we put those together. And we're trying to put indestructible plants. And so vincas, a potato vine, a petunias. These are things that trail down over those big hanging baskets. These are 10-gallon squat growers pots. We've rigged up with some very heavy gauged uh, wiring to keep them up on the lamp lamppost. And now they're starting to trail down. And the longest of the vines, those are potato vine or sweet potato vine. And they come in a lot of colors. I think down there we mainly use this chartreuse, a yellow-green kind of color. But mine at home, I used a blue-green variegated. I've got purples. They just do, they grow really well in the summer right through fall. And you're starting to see that mix show up here at the garden center. So the spring things, they've long since been gone. So we haven't had pansies and violas and snapdragons here at Waters Garden Center at least for, I don't know, two, three months. Those start showing up in February. March, April, first part of May, and then you run out. And then you switch to spring flowering things. These are things like your potato vine, uh, geraniums, petunias, uh, calipricoas. Uh, then, then you go into summer things like zinnias, uh, the real bright, heavy you know, dahlias, things that love the heat. Uh, that, that'd be also potato vine. And now we're starting to shift to the fall. It's just in that cusp of summer things are are. We're starting to run out of those crops, quite honestly. And now we're starting to see the fall mix. So in the perennial section, this is going to be your Gallardias, Mexican hat. Lots of autumn sage. This is really, you'll see um, your roses will really come out with a, a beautiful flush of color. Late summer, early fall. And they'll keep that color right through even, even, even a, a harsh frost they'll still have some of that color on there autumn sage is another one that's very famous for this late summer through autumn early early uh, a winter type of color this is when it's really famous shortly the the mum crop is close not quite it's heavily budded we're keeping them at the farm we're just it's a bit early yet but there'll be just maybe next week or the week after we'll start to see the chrysanthemums the asters, the true autumn kind of, of plants, uh, flowers kinds. These are all perennials. Put them in once, and then moms, they come back next year three times that size. It's just every year they come back over and over and over. All of these I've just mentioned do that. The summer shrubs, uh, crepe myrtles, I mean, they are so stunning. 
I, I keep bringing in, you know, 20 at a time, 30, 40 at a time, and they sell out before the weekend. It's just, it's so, they're so glorious right now. All around the mountain areas, the, the crepe myrtles, mainly the shrubs, uh, we don't really grow crepe myrtle trees. You'll find a few of them in the really warm spots, commercial settings. But really, winter tends to reset them to the ground. They have to start over. So you see them as a really pretty shrub here in the mountain at this elevation and higher. So, But there, this is when they shine. Uh, Rose of Sharon. It's another one. That's, that's for you desert uh, Hawaiian tropical folks. That's the one you want. So Rose of Sharon is the hardiest of all the hibiscus that you can grow. So that's the only one. It goes down to, I think, minus 20, maybe minus 30 degrees. We'll never see that kind of cold anywhere in the mountains of Arizona, at least. And so you can plant that. And you just know that shrub's going to come back. And every summer through fall, it's going to have these beautiful hibiscus kind of flowers. So that just it just covered. Literally, it'll have more flowers than foliage. It's really stunning. I think it's even prettier than the tropical variety of hibiscus uh, that, that grows more in Phoenix, you know, the, the SoCal, Palm Springs, those areas. Those actually will freeze out in the winter up here, that tropical variety. Those only go down to, I think, like 40 degrees, and then they just die. They do not like to be cold. They want to be in a tropical climate, consistent 72 degrees with 90% humidity. That's where they grow. Well, that's not the mountains of Arizona. We're more dry. We were beautiful last week, rainy every afternoon, and now it's 100 degrees. And, and next week, it'll be rainy and 70 degrees. It'll be cool. And it just fluxes back and forth. That's kind of, you need plants that can take that extreme kind of weather. And so these are things you're starting to see now. We're shifting over to, you'll see a lot of evergreens showing up at the garden center. So we're starting to make that transition. So by Labor Day is our goal. We never make it. But by October, sometime in October, we want to have the deciduous things. People really don't want to buy twigs in a bucket. So they just, they resist that. So they love evergreens. So we'll bring in the Indian hawthorns. That's an evergreen that blooms in the spring. Okay, that looks great through the spring. Lots of junipers. Um, you're seeing lots of, of broadleaf evergreens like red tip photinia, eleagnus, silverberry, a cotoneaster, two natives that do really well here. They're drought hardy as can be, and they're evergreen. And so we'll shift a lot of the inventory. We actually bump up uh, the inventory. We've got about till... Till the end of middle of, of November or so, we will bring in so much inventory. We'll carry all the inventory we need to get through winter. And so we've got to really strategize and calculate how much we're going to sell between uh, October 1 and March 15. And we have to have all that inventory here so that we can acclimate it. We want to hear so it it gets used to the fall seasons, that cool night, bright days, and the beautiful weather. And then that transition around Thanksgiving, it starts to get cooler. We want it to go in our, our natural cycle so that even in January, you can come in and buy a spruce tree. You can have a pine tree for uh, the holidays. Let's say after Thanksgiving, you want to celebrate, decorate, put presents under, and celebrate the gathering of the family. We'll have plants that we brought in in October into in in this month, in, in September, October mainly. And then we, we acclimate them or get them used to this climate. So there's a strategy to have healthy plants that will, will plant successfully for you. In fact, I'll fly up here uh, next week, uh, two weeks, two weeks ago. I'm flying up to our farms up in Oregon, taking a whole team. We're going to walk the farms. We're going to hand pick our fall and our spring, mainly fruit trees, shade trees and evergreens especially the evergreens so and then we'll start shipping those about two weeks after that first part of October, september october through through october and then we'll just load the garden center up and that's your sequence that's what you're seeing so the garden center is always full but it's full with different things each month uh, that's appropriate for or being acclimated for the season that is to come. Boy, we've got a lot in store for you. I didn't mean to go down that path. You know, how does a garden center work? It's way more technical than you need. 
but it's interesting. And I'm in my mind's in that mode. You got Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Some things are just better together. July is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Ah, thanks Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. Waters Garden companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, crepe myrtle, and purple verbena. Purple verbena is mountain famous for gorgeous summer-long flowers held over compact green foliage. This purple bloomer loves bright gardens, summer heat, and grows best in poor soils with less water. Go ahead and abuse this bloomer. You can't kill it. The perfect native perennial for easy summer long flowers. You'll only find the toughest verbena here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the mountain gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the family garden center. Now welcome back to the mountain gardener. And we're back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are other gardeners in the neighborhood talking about? What are they seeing? And so many times the more eyes and ears we have in the community, the smarter we all are because gardening, we actually bond. We, we learn more. We, we are better at gardening by doing it together. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. How's your uh, week going? You've been out unloading semis, I see, so <laughs> I can see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you still look good. <laughs> you you look strong. Hey. <laughs> hey. There's not too many 56-year-old women that unload semis. So. That's true. Yeah. Keeps us young, keeps us fit, keeps us, you're not going to put the much of a gut on. <laughs> In this business. <laughs> how, much, how much beer you drink after? Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. so. Or wine. Uh, you can't say that over the airwaves. Oh, People other. are judging us yeah, right we now. We don't drink at work. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. No, just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> so it's been good. That the, mm-hmm. A little hot in the afternoon. But, you know, it's people are in. Yeah. They're still gardening. We just had a fresh load of spruce and pine come in and... Mm-hmm. It's gone. I mean, it's just like, yeah. I was helping a customer yesterday going, Ken, where's all the plants? I said, well, there's a supply chain issue. Yeah. Um, it's hard. We've got orders out three, four, five weeks out. Uh, they're continually coming, uh, but there are hiccups. They're just, they're two weeks late or they're just, they haven't harvested yet. And so there's not as much staff out in the mm-hmm. fields to bring things in, to bring, to load trucks, trucking. Right. And so we've got more inventory than anyone else in this part of the county. Uh, but it's just, it's still, and there's still demand. So oh, yeah. sales are still up, I don't know, 30, 30, 35% or something, some crazy uh, off a record year from last year. So mm-hmm. it's still going. So people are in their backyards yeah, and they're still planting. They're still gardening. Still gardening so, and a lot of new people moving in still. That's so. true. Lots of new rooftops. Mm-hmm. And so we're seeing quite a few of that. Uh, they've come to garden classes. They've mm-hmm. been coming to three or four of them. And now they're finally moving in. Mm-hmm. And they're gardeners, obviously, because they're coming to garden classes. <laughs> and either they're completely bored or they're, <laughs> they, they want to know yeah. how to do it right. You know, save a, f- a few mistakes. Sure. And that's what the garden classes are. Is, is how can we help folks make less mistakes? Mm-hmm. Gardening is learned by making mistakes. But how can we learn off of someone else's mistakes right. and not make as many? That's, that's kind of the goal. Mm-hmm. Very true. Garden questions. So yeah. what do we got? Any, anything? Show me the interesting. Start with interesting, and then we'll go to hard. Uh, <laughs> how about we just start? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So talking about uh, new. So Mona is new in Prescott Valley. Yeah. She has a raised guard prepped on the east side of her house. She wants to know, can she still plant? And what kind of perennials and colorful shrubs would you recommend to put in there? Oh, east side. Actually, east side is the best side. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
in Prescott Valley, especially because you got those valley areas, Mm -hmm. you're exposed to that southwest wind. There's this prevailing wind, mainly in spring, not so much now, that just blows on your gardens and it affects plants. It can dry them out, especially new seedlings just coming up with the east side. You're protected from that wind. And you get the morning sun. So in the early spring, it'll it'll get rid of the frost faster. Things will germinate quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're just they just grow better. That half day sun, and they got the afternoon in the summer, afternoon protection. You can almost grow anything you want except the hardcore shade plant. So hosta, probably not so good out there. Yeah. But hookeras, that's kind oh, of a borderline plant. Happy. It would do great sure. right there. Beautiful evergreen perennial. Uh, your grandparents called them coral bells because they got little flowers that kind of come up like coral bells up about a foot high or so, maybe 18 inches. Um, but salvias, gallardias, there's a lot of choices right now at the garden center. We've got a greenhouse filled mm-hmm. with perennials that, that will grow in the sun. That's actually a full sun garden. So if you're new to the area, full sun is defined as six hours or, or more of sun. So that's the, at this altitude... That's pretty intense. Right. Uh, in other areas of the of the country, you know, no, that's only a half day of sun. Going, well, the, uh, here that's enough. Uh, you still get light that bounces off, reflects. It's still bright. Uh, but six hours or more, full sun plants. And so uh, echinaceas, uh, probably the number one seller, salvias. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would not introduce... Russian sage in there just because, or mint. Because that's all you'll have. It takes over. Oh, my gosh. It just takes over. But you could introduce a lavender. Sure. Or a rosemary. Mm -hmm. It'd be beautiful Mm -hmm. right there. That's one. Bring a picture. Give us some dimensions because you can't see, oh, it's a Mm 8-foot bed or a 20-foot bed. Right. You can't really visually see the dimensions. We can help you design that all day long. Mm -hmm. And, yes, you can plant and things would thrive Especially in a raised bed, because raised bed you're con- you're condensed, you're watching it better. You're set, you you're planting. You want to watch your little babies grow, so you're watering. You're you're fine tuning that. You're you're communing with that more often than mm-hmm. I planted a tree in the backyard. The drip system barely reached. I hope <laughs> it lives. I mean that's different. Yeah. Uh, than than raised beds or mm-hmm. off the patio. Plant a new tree off the patio. You're there every day. Sipping iced tea, enjoying morning coffee. You're just there watching it more so you can pamper it. So absolutely, you can plant right now. And there's a lot of choices at the garden center. I would agree. Yeah, lots of nice things in to look at. All right, Charles has a question about his aspens. They're about 10 years old. He waters every day. Shame on you, Charles. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, He has black (laughs) spots all over his leaves. And the color is somewhat fading. He wants to know what he can do to help his aspen. Yeah, so, okay, it's probably overwatering. That's We already, you kind of implied that one, but you should not water aspen every day. It doesn't like that. And so what will happen is just the coloring, you're flushing all the nutrients out of the soil, and so it's actually starving to death. Mm-hmm. So fertilize it. I would give it two fertilizers. Now, one f- true food, all-purpose plant food. It's a 744 seven, all-purpose food. We make it here at, at Waters Garden Center. It's got lots of sulfur in it, some iron that will help it green up, help it flush new leaves. We are not by any means close to the fall I mean, if things are showing fall color now, they are stressed out. Yeah. And more than likely, it's from overwater at this point, especially knowing you water every day. Uh, we've probably got some root rot, some things going on. So just come talk to us. This is probably important. Uh, don't let it go. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the tree is stressed, and it will die on you if you're not careful. I mean, it'll, you just want to pamper it. But there's plenty of time to recover. Probably back the watering off to a couple times a week. You know, Give it rest in bet- at least one day. Maybe yeah. water three or four times a week and train it to go to once a week. There's no way a 10-year-old tree needs water every day. That is not how God in- created trees. They're made to go long lengths of time with large root structures for sometimes months at a time before it needs water. Mm-hmm. Not as so much an aspen, but fertilize. Give it also humec. It's a all-purpose food and humec. That'll help it re-root. It's an organic. It's it's. Humic acid, it'll help it green up and help it reroot, and that's going to be your secret to that. The spotting, it's got leaf spot. That's a disease. It's from overwatering, so it's got leaf spot. It's got bacteria eating the foliage 
off the tree because it's just too wet. It can't protect itself. So I would spray it with Revitalize. We've got an mm-hmm. organic spray here. Come, Basically, take a picture. Come talk to us. You need to get in here right now. <laughs> you can't solve this over the airwaves. <laughs> get in. <laughs> here. Charles, come on. <laughs> All right, another quick one from Linda. She's looking for a privacy tree from a new home that's being built behind her. Her bedroom window faces yeah. the home. She was thinking of a pine, but she also wanted to know, is pine good or is there a better recommendation? Oh, or? great, great choice, especially for a bedroom because Austrian pine, Scotch pine, those are probably the, Austrian is probably the one I would go with. It's fastest growing and the least diseased mm-hmm. problems. Uh, that, that's, that's, and you could, you're fine to plant that right now. So we've got some beautiful new specimens that just came in. In fact, if you want to take a look, go to what I set up a website, uh, top 10 plants.com. Ooh. It goes to our new store we launched Ooh. and look at trees, evergreen trees. It'll have all the pine. You can see what's in stock right here, right now. So look at that. You can look at all the pine trees. It tells you how, how tall, how wide, It'll help you kind of do some research, and then you can come in and take a look. You could buy it right there. But I encourage you, you're right there. Come in, and we'll help you hand pick one mm-hmm. right here at the store. We can do your homework there and buy here or, or buy there and pick up here, whatever. That's a good way. But, yes, pine trees are a great way to go. You can also look at um, spruce. You can look at junipers, cypress. There's more choices, and all of those are on that top10plants.com. Okay. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, purple verbena, crepe myrtle, and pentas. Pentas are a butterfly magnet with super sweet nectar produced in starry flowers on 12-inch stems. She loves heat and wind with minimal care to keep the flowers coming. The large clusters of vibrant star-shaped flowers are stunning in pots and raised beds. A superb flower that outperforms others as long as it's hot. You'll only find heat-hardy pentas at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive. But so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Water's weed and grass stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and grass stopper. It's just $24 and only found at Water's Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So I had someone come to the garden center. I'm sitting out there. I'm helping them in that upper greenhouse area. And they were worried that this green, flaky type of of plant, really. It doesn't look like a plant. It looks like a green mold, but it's hard and, and crusty, like scaly, growing on pine trees. It grows on rocks. I've even seen it grow on the ground. And so they were really worried that this was going to damage their plant. This is a natural, symbiotic type of relationship that lichen has with plants. Uh, you'll see, in fact, the most interesting lichen story I've ever seen in my own personal life. Had a consultant fly in from Ohio. He's a hiker. He loves hiking. So he came in and consulted, you know, how to run a garden center better. So got inventory and turns and customer service and all this brainiac stuff. And I go, okay, Sid, are you done? I'm going to take you down the Grand Canyon to my favorite spot. And so he gave an extra day, two days with us, stayed at our house. And I took him down to Indian Gardens, out to Indian Point, and we overlooked the river. Uh, I didn't know what his hiking abilities were. That's a pretty dangerous thing if you're going down all at one time and touch the river, come back. But out to Indian Point, it's it's relatively easy. He's used to the uh, Smoky Mountains, not the Rocky Mountains. And there's a whole other level at that elevation that, that kind of did get to him. We hike out there. And we have lunch out on the point, and he's just blown away by the beauty. He can't believe someone would handhold him and take him right to God, center of God's creation right there. He's awestruck. 
And so we're, we're budding around, kind of just enjoying the whole thing. And then it's the monsoon season. He's, uh, there's a storm coming up from the north, uh, what was that, uh, east side of the canyon. It's coming right at us. And we're talking lightning is in the canyon. It is coming. More people die from lightning strikes, and I know this, so I'm going, Sid, we need to go. we got to go hurry. Let's go. Let's pick up the pace. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's make it to the walls at least. Let's go. And so you could just watch the storm coming right at us, and he's just plodding along. He's a plotter. Didn't see the urgency. He didn't know he's about to die. He just enjoyed the moment. And uh, as I look up, we're maybe maybe a mile from the wall yet, and so they're going straight up towards Bright Angel uh, Trail. Um, the lichen on the canyon walls, you actually don't see a lot of the wall of the rock on the Grand Canyon. It's covered in lichen and the humidity from that storm and the lightning or something. It just got that canyon wall to flare up and change colors. You'll see this in your own landscape. Those boulders you, you hand picked, they've got that, that green lichen on it. When a storm is coming or it's raining, it'll actually change colors. It'll go from oranges to greens to bright fuchsias to it just changes colors and it depends on the variety. But the entire canyon wall, every, and we're talking miles of canyon wall straight up, you know, 5,000 feet. It was crazy. Uh, we didn't die. No one got struck by lightning. Uh, my consultant, he's coming back to see us because he is just wowed by Arizona. Ohioans just don't, they don't get this. And so he's got a friend that'll take him hiking again. So we'll take him up to Page, show him what uh, Lake Powell is all about. So, but that lichen actually changes color depending on the humidity. And I think customers are starting to see some of that in their yard, especially if you, if you have some established native trees. Very common to see your pinyon pines. Uh, your your oaks, the uh, junipers, to have lichen growing on them. The boulders will have lichen growing on them. They say that it takes about 50 years for lichen to grow onto a tree. Uh, I'm not... I'm not convinced of that. I think Yes, it can take up to 50 years, maybe. But some I've had a plant nerd, called himself a horticulturist, university, said, uh, no, it's 50 years. You don't want to damage them. It's got to really take care of. I've seen lichen grow on the ground where cattle's roaming around. So I know it doesn't take that long, but it is a fragile ecosystem. So you do want to treat it with care, but it actually helps cool down your trees. It's a good thing for your plants. Don't try to kill it. Don't spray it with Roundup or some of these toxic, you know, cancer-causing chemicals. You be gentle with it and just enjoy what nature has given us on your on your boulders, on your rocks, on your it'll grow on timbers. Uh, it just grows almost anywhere, and I don't know where it comes from. I've tried to pick some pieces up and bring it home, and it dies every time. It's not worth trying to to transplant. It's just it's fragile, but where it does grow, it's very healthy. So so don't worry about it. There might even be where it, where it actually keeps bark beetles and some of these infectious kind of bugs from getting into the trunk. And mainly it grows on the north side of a tree. In fact, it's one way to catch your bearings when you're walking through the forest. If you're not quite sure which way is north, south, east, west. Look at the trees. Look for the lichen growing up and down that tree. And generally it's going to grow on that northern exposure in the more shaded areas of your of your of trees and things. So just, I don't even know, didn't mean to go six minutes on uh, lichen, but some of these things you're seeing for the first time because we finally have some moisture. Last year, lichen was almost forgotten because it got crusty and scaly and dry, but it was living. Just didn't have enough humidity and moisture to really grow and be vibrant and come alive. This year, it's been spectacular, it's beautiful, bright yellows and oranges and greens. It's just beautiful and good for your trees. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Waters Garden companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, verbena, and crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle flowers are intense watermelon pink solar reds and led whites that cover this heat loving shrub plant where you enjoy its beautiful multicolored bark and sinuous branches up close 
the flowers show against forest green foliage that turns red and orange in autumn. Growing to just head height, every yard has room for at least one and only available for summer planting here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we have Lisa Waters Lane back in the studio. Now, I don't know why. Why don't you just come in the studio? Yeah. Stay with me in this small cubicle I call my office. <laughs> I think you just answered your own question. <laughs> <laughs> just help me do the whole show. It'd be great. It'd be entertaining. I would like it. The listeners would like it. The show would be upgraded. We got better opinions, better thoughts. What do you think? Uh, no. We have been doing it this format for what, 20 time. years? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing so, two segments. That's, that's like true. It's a third of the show. The sh- okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, just trying. So Lisa Waters Lane, this segment is hers, and she just shares what's going on in her gardens, her her thoughts, how she's helping customers, what she's seen in her own gardens. Just uh, a woman's perspective, I think, is better. Uh, the fragrances, you just pick up colors. You're, t- you just have this artistic thing that I can never dream of. You got beautiful gardens, and I, and I talked you into, well, marrying me, thirty three <laughs> years ago. And then I talked into ha- coming on the show, and so I think that's yeah. – I respect your opinion, my dear. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Can I have that in writing? Sure. Can I mean, I have I'll, it? I'll put it in Can poetry form. Can I have it on a plaque? <laughs> well, now you've just gone too far. <laughs> we did just have an anniversary. Happy anniversary we again, did. dear. Thank you. Um, 33 years ago. Yep. I created a, technology is amazing. There's a 3D <laughs> cube of glass. I took our picture of our, one of our uh-huh. anniversary pictures and they embedded that in the middle of the glass and it was a two dimensional digital photo, but right. they made it 3D. It's crazy, beautiful. And then it lights yeah. up. Kids were mesmerized. The grandkids couldn't look at it long <laughs> enough. It's it just different. It's very unique. Yeah. I like it. It's really cool. But when it's when it's on in a room, the rest of the room is dark. It looks... You need it to pulsate. It's kind of eerie because wherever you move, <laughs> the little figures move yeah. and look at you. So yeah. really we told neat. our kids they had to keep it for like forever, <laughs> pass it down through the generations. Upon our demise. <laughs> they're going, who are these people? Gra- great grandpa. What are, what are they going on? Well, that's your great, great grandfather. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's long gone. <laughs> put it back in the drawer. <laughs> we don't put it out. We never put that out. Anyway. Anymore. <laughs> we should talk about gardening. That's kind of morbid. We'll talk about gardening okay. stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, like you said, uh, earlier I was unloading a semi this morning and that's probably, I think the third, yeah. fourth one, fourth truck this we week. We got in this week. So yeah. a lot of new stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that's just gorgeous, a lot of stuff that we've kind of been out of, but we're finally getting yeah. new stock back in. So I thought I would just kind of hit a few of the goodies that's great. that came in. I love those crepe myrtles that just came in there. They're gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Probably the last load. Yeah, I think they're so. They're starting to go, because they've been in bloom for oh, mm-hmm. two months. Right. And so we've sold hundreds of crepe myrtles, mm-hmm. but this just looks, oh, they're beautiful new lavender pinky Yeah, so we color. got uh, endless... Uh, endless red, yeah. and then we got a musky, muskiki, which is yeah. kind of a lavender yeah. color. So yeah, I mean, we this probably is the last load for those crepe, crepe myrtles, myrtles, which are yeah. yeah. But I love crepe myrtles in the yard. The colors yeah. on them are just so dynamic and so bright. You see them from like a mile away. So yeah. every yard should have a crepe myrtle. I think every yard should have at least two crepe myrtles. They come in so many colors, and they love the heat. They yeah. love the sun. Great plan for our climate. I don't climate. care if you're in Black Canyon City, all the way up to Camp Verde, Cottonwood, Sedona, to Williams. To, 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 I mean, all the valley areas, Paulden, Skullvet, they all, they just grow. They adapt to the mountains. Mm-hmm. 
and the heat, the hot spots, right. really well. Yeah, quite nicely. We also got in, which we've been out of for a while, some new gardenias. Oh, nice. So the one we got in is the one called Frost Proof, which yep. is probably one of my favorite. Hardiest. I love that one. Um, so those people who've been looking for those, come in and check them out. Gardenias are great for east side of the house, uh, filtered light. Probably not the best in the hot sun out by yeah. themselves, but everybody has a spot they could put one. We have ours in a container on mm-hmm. the back patio. It's the north side. It's where we entertain. Lots of seating areas and the fragrance. It's an evergreen shrub mm-hmm. that blooms with fragrance like none other. So gardenia. And there's a hardy variety. That's frost is mm-hmm. probably the toughest of all the gardenias yeah. for the mountain gardens. Very nice one. And we got some Chicago hardy figs in. Ooh, nice. So for those people that have been looking to finish off their orchards or their, what do they call that kind of gardening? Orchard, edible, sustainable. Permaculture. Uh, permaculture. permaculture. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So maybe you I'm know, totally wrong, but you know. <laughs> customer, listeners will let us know. I sure <laughs> They will. always do. <laughs> but yeah, the Chicago hardy is nice because it's rated for a much colder temperature than yeah. a lot of like your uh, brown turkey, black missions. So it's a good one for hair. Yeah. Definitely Best, one. I would say. But it, does, it doesn't burn back. Some of the other varieties can burn back to the ground. It acts like right. a perennial, which is fine for figs. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Chicago Hardy is, I think, the most robust and still has got that big, rich, dark yeah. fig that melts in your mouth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we also got in some really nice looking uh, Rose of Sharon. And the hibiscus rose of Sharon. So that one's going to come back every year. We got the chiffon, uh, kind of a lavender double flower one. Very, very pretty. And then we got a blue, I call it azure satin. So it's more of that single one. But the blossom on it is really nice and big. Very, very pretty. Standout color. Beautiful out in the yard. What color is that? Is that blue? It's it's blue. But it's yeah. kind of lav- periwinkle. Lav- periwinkle. I'll call okay. it periwinkle. As a man, I don't even know what you just said, <laughs> but okay. Blue. Yeah, got it. <laughs> you, you call it periwinkle. God only gave me seven crayons. Can you relate to the which 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 of the seven? Anyway, uh, we also got some great uh, physocarpus, which is nine bark. I was trying to think of the yeah. other name. So nine barks, um, I think, are just a beautiful, beautiful shrub because they come in uh, some of those more different colors that you can't always find in shrubs. They kind of have the burgundies and the bronzes. And we got one in that's uh, called darts gold, which is kind of that chartreuse green, the yellow one that shows up wonderfully out in the yard. If you have dark spaces, it's it's good to put that color in there because it really pulls, um, you see it so nicely out in the yard. has a big leaf to it. Mm -hmm. It's stunning. Very unusual. Grow it in containers, raised beds. But again, it's one of those unusual tough plants. You folks in the Midwest, you know what nine bark is. Everyone else doesn't. (laughs) But it grows here in the mountains of Arizona really well. It grows quite nicely. So we got tiny wine in, which I think does have a smaller leaf, but still kind of a dark bronzy, real pretty, pretty leaf. The darts gold. And then we got amber jubilee. Of that one is definitely nice. worth checking out if you're looking for something different in your yard besides just another boxwood, you know. Yeah, you not that. eight bark, <laughs> not ten bark, nine a bark. I think That's it's called nine bark. That's a good nine, question. Nine bark. I don't know. <laughs> we'll probably probably Doctor Nine came up with it, so he <laughs> named it Nine Bark. <laughs> it's usually how it works. Nine. Okay. <laughs> That sounds that was offensive. Sorry. Yeah. I just unloaded a truck. I'm tired. <laughs> I could be okay. dehydrated. So we also got some wonderful spireas in. We got the Anthony Water, which oh, has nice. that really dark, dark pink fuchsia blossom on it. Uh, Double Play, which is another pink one. We got Gold Flame, which there again is really pretty because it has that pink blossom, but the leaves are that gold color. Yeah. And so it just shows up so nice out there. And then Magic Carpet, which I think is Magic Carpet more the dwarf Yeah, it's, it's a low-growing. Mm-hmm. Spireas can be large, like Anthony Waters up, I don't know, knee-high. Mm-hmm. So you just almost change by color, by height. So the it's more of a car, ground cover type variety. Mm-hmm. And Spireas, if you're in the animal country... Deer, don't bother it. Rabbits, yeah. do not eat spireas. I don't know why, but they'll take you color now through fall. Yeah. No animals eat it. It's tough. It's mm-hmm. a great plant for your... I agree. I agree. And then we also got some different blueberries in. We oh, got nice. Duke, Patriot, and Sunshine. So for those people who didn't quite grab them earlier in the season, but yeah. they're still thinking blueberries, 
um, those would be great varieties to put in. I didn't look. Do they have blueberries on them? They don't. No, okay. It's, it's way too late to say. <laughs> I'd be truly awe inspired if they lie had blueberries say, oh, this <laughs> time of year. But you can plant them now. Nice shrub. They'll, they'll produce next spring mm-hmm. for you. Anyway, great. New plants just off the truck that you can plant right now and add to your gardens. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners will be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants for July are maple, verbena, crepe myrtle, and rose of Sharon hibiscus. Rose of Sharon is a mountain hardy hibiscus with an enemy like blooms. Each stem of this hardy hibiscus is packed with buds. She makes a beautiful informal hedge or screen and is easily trained into small trees. Available Prescott colors show in blue, purple, white, red, and pink for years of enjoyment. You'll find breathtaking hibiscus here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Some things are just better together. July is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Aw, thanks Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. So in my own yard or at the garden center here, we've got a big property. We've got lots of acres we show plants off of, lots of greenhouses uh, and weeds we've got figured out. We keep them under control. Yeah, we spot treat them every once in a while, but the, this is a natural growing place for anything that wants to bloom or grow, including weeds. And so, but, but we figured out how to deal with those. Some of my rental properties, um, there, it's it's harder. I just bought a new, uh, what is it, uh, f- a fourplex, and we're starting to get it ready. It's not a true fourplex for you investment folks. I mean, it's like four different buildings on a big lot, and we're getting it ready to rent. And so it's two bedroom, two bath, one bed, one bath, big block buildings, garages. And so it's been neglected for a while. And so an older gentleman, and finally, it was his original house. We bought it. It's over here by the garden center, and, and I, we're just getting it ready. And so, but weeds, oh my goodness, they had not taken care of the weeds in years, and they are growing like I have. I can't believe it. So they're growing. You could watch them sit there, have pour a glass of tea. You could watch them grow in the backyard. So we're trying to get ahead of this this, this thing. So you, you you folks that have investment properties, you know, you want low, easy to care for, low maintenance. So your, your tenants don't have to worry about gardening and landscaping. They're worried about making their payments and coming home from work and just watching the kids, playing with the dog, that. So not, not taking care of weeds. That's the landlord's side. So you want plants that are really easy to care for. And so we've been helping landlords, you know, just helped a landlord. They, they planted some boxwoods and the tenant just can't keep them alive. They said, what can I do? Well, probably you got the wrong plant for where they're at. Let's switch you over to native cotoneasters, native silverberries, junipers. There's a whole series of plants that are really easy to grow that you just can't kill, uh, that you trim once a year, and it's, it's so easy to grow. And weeds are going to be less of a problem. What we did for these big fields of weeds, this is a half acre. Maybe it's more than that. I don't know. Uh, and all of it's weeds. And so I took some decimate it's a super strong concentrated non-discriminant weed killer so it kills broadleaves and grass all at the same time it'll kill elm uh, the elm trees all the seed are germinating right now it goes in and kills those new seedlings at least while they're small once they get big you're gonna have to shift to something we've got something even stronger called brush and stump killer so it kills off brush the big woody stuff but while you catch them while they're small it's pretty easy to kill them and so i powered up a hose in sprayer 
with a, and I just filled the, the hose in sprayer with Decimate. This is the, the, the weed killer. And I just set it at the highest set, setting 10, out, 10 uh, tablespoons to a gallon of water. That should be strong enough. That's a super concentrated weed killer. And I just went out there and I hosed down big swaths of the landscape. And it doesn't affect the soil. It only kills the weeds. So it doesn't go into the soil and kill the trees that are growing there. I don't want to harm the apple trees. Those are kind of magical. You want those, your tenants going out and picking fresh apples? I'll nurture that. I'll prune that up this winter and make sure next year's harvest is even more magnificent. They'll talk about it with all their friends going, wow, I rented this place that, that's got fresh apples I can pick, apricots, peaches. Going, yeah, and we'll make sure they grow for you every year. But I don't want to affect them by po poisoning the soil underneath. Decimate just kills the, the, the actual weeds, whether it's a dandelion, a whore, whorehound, a goat head. Uh, I see a tree of heaven growing up every place. Elm trees. It, everything is growing all at once. It's crazy. And so it's turning into a jungle. That's just not acceptable. And so hose it down. And then what I'm doing is that right afterwards, I'm putting down and spreading weed and grass stopper in those areas that have heavy infestation. In other words, there's a lot of seed right there germinating. And they're not all germinated. There's more to come. And so I killed off the ones that, that the last rain system uh, came with. I'm going in afterwards, and I want to keep those seed from germinating. Or if they do germinate, it burns them off right away. So I want to keep this area where I'm not out there as a landlord or a homeowner, my, my own house. I've put down this weed and grass stopper several times over the past year. Don't have weeds, but I, I was out spot treating and I noticed you see where you missed it. And so I'll concentrate, kill all those weeds off in that area, and then I'll go back, just spot treat with weed and grass stopper, and it keeps my maintenance factor. I also notice I've got two dogs, and uh, where the dogs, where there's some heavy dog traffic, they seem to kick the dirt up and wrestle around. And there's a barrier that weed and grass stopper forms, it's about a two inch barrier through the soil, top layer keeps a seed from establishing. Well, if they're kicking around or kids are ju jumping around or just things are happening, it can break open that barrier so it opens up the earth and seeds start to germinate. So you need to reapply in those areas with heavy traffic or you just missed it. I thought I had better coverage than that, but I just missed it. And so that's where a hand spreader, I usually take, I've got a battery operated uh, Scott's hand spreader. It's greatest spreader ever holds about a pound worth of stuff maybe two so it's lightweight didn't kill you oh uh, you know drag lugging around this huge backpack kind of s spreader um this one's easier to handle and i just try to get it as even as i can then you pray for rain or you water it in real quick goes in the soil and that's what creates your barrier so you'll notice if you've been doing this if you're a landlord you've been doing this for your tenants or you're just home that a big acreage and you've gone down that driveway and you've been able to keep up with it but if you notice that you missed a spot spot treat it with decimate to kill off those weeds that are there and then go in afterwards right afterwards and put down some additional an extra layer of weed and grass stopper and it will get rid of it'll really get ahead of this where you're not you don't you're not a slave to weeds if you don't do anything you're truly a, a slave for the next two three months i mean weeds will grow actively through november i mean just just aggressively so you get them all cleaned up and two weeks later you're going where did those things come what what is going on here so i always have a one gallon pump up sprayer that's always there and i have, I have a big big letters i write on there sh um weeds weed killer and so i know i just this sprayer is only for weed killers i'm not going to spray bugs or fungal stuff or mildews it's just for weed killers and I always keep a gallon of decimate mixed up in there. That's another one, too. For, for those of us that are um, maybe not in our prime, our, our youth, like we used to be, our heads are, but our bodies get tired easier, skip that big two-gallon, three-gallon sprayer and forget the backpack sprayer. Those are just laborious, and you, they wear you out. Smaller is better. Go with a half-gallon. A one gallon, 
you can carry one gall- a gallon of milk around the yard and spot treat kind of kind of that that much weight is easy on you. You can manipulate and kind of get around shrubs, just easier to work with. A big anything bigger than that, boy, it just wears on your back and your knees and your shoulders. Uh, just it's just easier. So I always I have a tank a week philosophy. It's one tank at my own personal house, and I go through and I just spot treat. I don't use the whole gallon. I just use what I need to. And I keep it under control. And I literally have no weeds. Do the same thing here at Waters Gardens. And here we've got many acres. But if you keep up on it and you've put the weed and grass stopper down, you're not going to see many weeds. And if you go out once a week and just spot treat the few that show up, you won't have any weeds. In fact, the neighbors around here, around this, this, uh, around the gardens, are going, how do you do that? There's no weeds on your fence line. There's no weeds. Well, I don't want weeds. Weeds attract disease and grasshoppers and blister beetles and fungal stuff. You don't want weeds at a garden center. That's that's a sign that you're lazy and not up with it. You can't keep up with your own property. How are you going to help customers keep up with theirs? So you got to put on a clean show. If you're in retail, the, 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 the assignment of selling and showing plants off, I think it's right to have a clean, organized property because those diseases migrate over to your plants really easy and so we don't want that we want it to be clean and neat and organized so we're very purposeful that's how you do it decimate weed and grass stopper pair those things off for the next month or so just as you see cluster the weeds spray that overlay it with a little bit of weed and grass stopper and you won't have weeds for the next for through spring of next year i mean for a year it'd be amazing it'll cut down the work of gardening greatly in your yard You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, verbena, and crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle flowers are intense watermelon pink, solar reds, and LED whites that cover this heat-loving shrub plant where you enjoy its beautiful multicolored bark and sinuous branches up close. The flowers show against forest green foliage that turns red and orange in autumn. Growing to just head height, every yard has room for at least one and only available for summer planting here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. One of the philosophies that we have here at Waters Garden Center, one of our core values, we believe once you buy a plant from Waters Garden Center, you're going to have so much success, beauty, pride, that your grandparents would even be proud of your gardens. And your, we, we think that this is generational, that you can take your kids out and teach them gardening and show them the magic of butterflies and, and beneficial insects and growing zinnias and picking a fresh cucumber, tomatoes. There's something magical about this generational thing called gardening. And I think that's even the case for generational businesses. So we're third generation. So I'm second generation. My kids work here. The third, we've got three generations working here at the family garden center here in Prescott called Waters Garden Center. There's a pride thing. You want your grandparents, your parents to see what you're doing, building and go, wow, why didn't I think of it? I love where you've taken this. It's grown so much. I'm so proud of you. You should be proud too. I think there's that, that connection, that ownership. And in small business, it's not about the money. I mean, we could go, I was a commercial banker before this. That's where the real money, it's crazy money. My, my expense account was bigger than my, what I make now. But I love my town. I love my neighbors. 
I love going to church with with my customers and seeing them at grocery stores and going to concerts at, at the yep by college my college your class of eighty three just there's this community local thing and and I think that small businesses are here yes we're a for profit if we don't make a profit shame on us because we can't do good for our people our customers or our community but that goes without saying if you don't make a profit you should be go you should go bankrupt you should you shouldn't be around but if you do do good your family should be able to be taken care of your employees should be able to be taken care of and and well and your customers should feel nurtured proud I'm, this is my i have more customers come in and say this is my garden center i brought my neighbor over she's new i wanted her to see my gardens that's that's community that that's special and, and then we give back to causes that are valuable to us so we're hosting a uh, a grapes for good event here september 19th it's we for those of you who've been you, you know it's a big deal it's a huge garden party there'll be 300 people here i hope if, if the COVID thing doesn't get us, it looks like it looks like it's an outdoor event. It looks like CDC will let us go mask or not mask. I'm not sure, but we're going to try and we're going to raise 60, 70 grand for the schools and other causes. And I've partnered with Rotary, which Rotary International is a business service club. So they help. I'm a Rotarian, so I love that cause, but I can help make them better. I can use my staff, my team to my marketing to help them Build what they couldn't do by themselves, and that's that's community. That's way more valuable than a than a paycheck. I do well. I'm okay. Am I going to be a multi bazillionaire, a bezo of, of Prescott, Arizona? I don't care. I don't. I don't want to. I'm happy. I'm healthy, and I love helping neighbors and the pride that comes. I think that's small business. That's that's independence. And they say shop local. I don't think it's shop local. Local means keep the tax dollars right here. That means shop at your box stores, your your warehouses, shop anywhere local. I think there's a benefit to shopping small. You know the owners. I just had my glass replaced, Prescott Glass and Mirror. Wasn't quite happy. So Scott Dandos, good friend. We sang in choir together back in the day, back in the 80s. I'm almost embarrassed to say that. I said, Scott, I'm not quite happy. He just made it right, just like that. He said, Ken, come in. I'm going to get this thing going for you. It'll be done. It just that's, that's, that's community. I don't think I would get that with a mega glass repair shop. I think that local, intimate, smaller people I know, that's worth paying an extra 5% or whatever it is. I didn't even check price. I think it's worth it because I know Scott and I support his family and just the dollars keep going round and round. I didn't mean to go that. I meant to give you some garden info, but uh, uh, fall is a good time to plant. There you go. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We're here every week with timely garden advice. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. The place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.